The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. You ready to say hi to everybody? All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien. This is my man, Tommy O'Brien. We're coming to you live from TFNN. The whole gang's here. As my producer, Al, says, that is the truth. We're watching a little bit of Lightning McQueen this morning. And boy, we are watching these markets. We have a CPI number. Comes in a little bit soft. We're talking about inflation potentially near about 3% right now. And we got markets spiking. We got yields pulling back. We got a lot of action to kick things off. Let's get right into it. S&Ps, we are up by 60 points. We just hit 44.90. We're trading at 44.84 right now. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100. We're up by 264. That's 1.75%. You talk about an acceleration, man. 15,815 right now in the NASDAQ 100. The Dow up more than a percent. 34,745. And how about the Russell, man? 3.5%. You're looking for volatility, man. Hit up that Russell. 3.55% on the Russell right now. I mean, for some context there, that would be like the S&P being up 120, 135, uh, 150 plus points in terms of a percentage basis on the Russell. Continued volatility. Bitcoin, down $205. Bitcoin's its own animal recently. Crude catches a little bit of a spike right now. We got some commodity action because we have yield action. And what do we have? We got yield action. We're going to get some currency movement as well. We have the dollar. Uh, let's jump over. DXY. With quite a pullback. So what do we got? We got weaker yields. We have a weaker dollar. And because of that, we have a stronger market right now. They're all acting in correlation and we got the gold contract spiking up to 1961 right now you spiked to 1940 initially on that cpi number at 830 we're trading up 11 dollars on gold and the all-important notes and bonds and you talk about a move man we've been talking about the test of this channel line pretty sure that was the test folks okay upward we go higher price lower yield you gotta love these channel lines right what were we talking about last week ah you know it probably makes sense to come back and test this channel line to some degree where do we get 107 was the price point. Let's put it on a five minute basis. We got there. Yeah, yesterday morning towards the end of the program, we trade down to 107. And just like that, we're almost higher by two full points right now. Oh, what, happened? what happened, buddy? Did it go down? Let's see. Let's find it. There it is. There it is. Oh, we got McQueen. You want to show everybody McQueen? Hey, what's he doing? Is he racing? You show him your shirt? What do you got in your shirt? Who do you got? Who's on your shirt? Spider-Man. That's right. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's get into the headlines, and we kick things off. And there's the headline, man. Inflation growth in October was cooler than expected. And that's putting it lightly when you take a look at what the Fed is, um, what the market is doing. Excuse me. While this report provides good news for the Fed policymakers, and it may take the impetus off for, for a hike off the table, it's a very different story for Americans, right? And that is one of the most perplexing parts of things, man. Just because inflation is back down to 2 to 3%, prices are never going back down, man. And prices are up, what, 25% over the last three or four years? Going to be interesting to see if that weighs on the economy. It has not yet. We get retail sales tomorrow at 830. We get PPI tomorrow as well. Is he racing? Oh, is he racing, Tommy? What are we having? Are we having some bread? What are we having this morning? Tell him. We have some grapes? Oh, he's racing. He's into his racing, folks. Oh. Okay, and let's get into, I mean, look at these charts, right? This is a great chart here. A pretty holistic view of the past few years of inflation. Services remain firm, but there's a cooling in goods and food, okay? Now, check out the peak in 2022. I like this chart. You can see the pockets of where inflation was persistent, okay? And where are they still persistent? Core services hasn't moved down at all. That's the most remarkable part of this whole thing. So is that going to be the sticky part? What happens if energy comes back? Doesn't seem to be the case so far. Core goods, almost non-existent in the inflation picture. Food, a very little relative part. 
Oh, is he racing Tommy? Oh. Nonetheless, the market loves this number. Look, look at them. They're dancing. You want to pick a different one? Which video are you going to pick? Oh, you love that racing, huh? Wow. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay, just going through some of the other numbers in terms of where we are right now. Super core inflation. That's what the Fed has propagated, okay? Where is that? Declining as well. We're at about 3.75%. That's CPI core services minus housing, okay? So 3.75% is the number there. And yeah, markets spiked dramatically, and we're dealing with numbers. Let's scroll down and get the actual numbers to the 830 price point. Airfare, airfare is falling 0.9%. Yeah, you get the 10-year yield spike into 4.5%, I think, was the last number I saw, 15 basis points. Energy index falling. The gas index was down by 5%. Look at these moves. Today's going to be an interesting day in the market, to put it lightly, man. They're not catching up for me fast enough. Okay, we'll pull up the numbers and get the numbers exactly, but nonetheless, let's jump around to these markets, man, because this S&P is bouncing up against near recent highs at 44.83. And we are now a stone's throw away from recent highs. You were at 46.34 in July. You trade all the way down to 4,100 and change, and just like that, we are going to open at 44.83 in this market with quite an acceleration. We're now well above the highs that we had back there in October. Which one are you watching, buddy? There he is. Got to love it, folks. Appreciate you joining us. Nothing better than doing the program with my son. Uh, we got a couple sick kids in the house. Tommy's all right. We got another sick kid in the house, the babysitter, the grandma, Nana. She's a little sick this morning. So we're all just kind of hunkering down. We're making it, um, but we're excited. And we're going to be back in Boston this weekend, too, man. We got an O'Brien. My dad was talking about an O'Brien family reunion on Saturday. Uh, excited for that, of course. So we're making sure 100% to make that happen as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the commodities. We jump to crude. Crude prices up a buck, uh, almost a dollar, 88 pennies. This one's been quite a pullback, man. I just showed you the energy part of inflation, right? Going to be interesting to see what happens with crude here. As we're chopping around at 75 was the recent low. 79 is where we're sitting. There you go, daddy. There we go, buddy. Gold contract. That's a different story, man. You know, if this is the real bounce, folks, and boy, you got to love Channel Lines. I'm thinking of our man Bud Rolfs on this morning. Does it get any clearer than that, folks? Does it? What do we talk about? You break out of the Channel Line. That's not the buy. What's the buy? The test is the buy. There was the test. It was about 107 to the price point. And boy, you talk about a decisive break. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods, right? We can all be data dependent to a certain degree. Uh, but boy, that is a decisive break. And where are we going, man? As in, is this going to be the trend that we push things up to? Where we were in May, it seems fantastical to think that the 10-year can make that type of a turnaround. But you got to remember the move we just had, folks, okay? I mean, let's back it up even during COVID, all right? Look at these moves. This move off the bottom is nothing right now, okay? Depending on where we have been. The move off the bottom, the first move, probably of many. We'll see where we go today. Stay tuned. We're going to come back. We'll get some analysis from our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back, folks. Tigers, have you ever wondered what it would be like to trade right alongside Larry Pesavento? We'll wonder no more. Wednesday, November 15th, Larry Pesavento will be hosting a live trading webinar. From 8 a.m. to noon, look over Larry's shoulder as he analyzes potential trades and sets them up. Not only will you get a front row seat to the mind of a veteran trader, but you'll get to interact with Larry live as he plays his trades and goes through key material that has aided him in his profession. Go to the front page of TFNN.com, sign up for the service, and enjoy. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Tom O'Brien joining you here, and we're going to jump right into it. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Uh, today's going to be an important day in the market. And Kevin, what do you think of the numbers, man? Quite a market reaction this morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, holy milk treatment. Because either these markets were expecting something different or they really like the, the, these numbers that you know, if you're watching the markets on a daily basis, Tommy, you knew that crude oil had gone from $95 in the beginning of October to $77 at the end of it. So you knew there was going to be a big move in energy, and there was. Uh, core number, I think, that actually surprised that that, that would be a tenth of a percent uh, from a number of Energy year over year, four percent. That's a tenth better last month and a tenth better than expected. So, if energy was dominant in the headline data, as you, um, but there's a like energy percent fuel oil in uh, no point nine. But here's the number, Tommy. That like, or services X housing, right? Month over month, up point two. Year over year, up seven percent. Tommy, so oh. yields. You see the move in VIX, and overall, Tommy, uh, at least for the start of today, the market really likes it. It's always interesting, and I appreciate the wrap-up, man. Some great numbers in there, and it is always interesting when we get some economic numbers prior to the market open like this. We get a reaction um, that does not happen often, to put it lightly. Boy, yields really pulling back. I got the 10-year this morning. Right now, Kevin, 4.47%. Not that long ago, we are having the 5 conversation. That's down 16 basis points from yesterday, though. Just mammoth moves on the yield spectrum. A lot of the conversation, of course, goes to the impetus to hike, the level, the bar that they have to reach maybe to get a next hike. And these numbers keep coming in. We get some important numbers tomorrow. I'm going to go a little big picture, Kevin, because we're all kind of thinking of that question. I know you like to tell the viewers and the listeners to stay current and don't go too, out, too far out in the future. And is that something you're still trying to do, Kevin, in terms of staying current? Because there's a lot of speculation right now about, you know, 
who when do the cuts potentially come if things keep going like they're going we saw goldman morgan right they're putting out their estimates they vary wildly whether it's 150 basis points over the next year and a half maybe it's 300 basis points do you allow your head to think about that conversation as a trader right now, Kevin, or do you try and stay current still as, I mean, that conversation is dominating things uh, for good reason in terms of when they really make that pivot to cutting. But how do you think about that question on a morning like today, Kevin? Yeah, some hyperbolic numbers put out by some of these big firms on where they think the Fed funds rate is going to be next year and how many rate cuts. But here's the thing, Tommy, here's the thing for your brewers to think about. As inflation comes down, right, which it is, we all admit that, that five and a quarter to five and a half level of, of Fed funds rate gets more and more restrictive as the overall inflation rate comes down. So you don't want to keep it over restrictive because then the pace will pick up, right? So, yeah, there you can make the case that as inflation comes down, that Fed funds rate should ease down with it. So you can, you're can you going to start to see in some of the rhetoric from the Fed speakers of something like that. Neil Kashkari said it a week ago. I thought it was very important. So watch for that to seep into the rhetoric. As inflation starts to come down, that Fed funds rate has to come down so it's not overly restrictive to, to the overall economy. So I think that's where the rhetoric will start, Tommy. It's a great point, man. I had talked about it a couple times, and I think that's the toughest one for myself and many people to get their head around because they're still going to be trying to be restrictive, but they're probably going to start making that case if the data allows it to make those cuts and remain restrictive. And that's going to be a little difficult maybe to, to wrap your head around. But it's a great point, man. I love the analysis. Tommy, here's something to think about real quick. Very soon, the biggest light item on the government's budget the biggest line item will be interest on the debt. There's another case where they may probably bring down rates. Yeah, it may. we've seen banks fail. Of course, they matter. And uh, I'm doing the show with Tommy this morning, Kevin. He's watching a little Spider-Man on YouTube, giving uh, Google a little bit of viewership numbers this morning. But, you know, you talk about those debt numbers, man, and Tommy's two years old. And boy, uh, we got to make sure that we get things under control, man, so that when he's my age, 40, my goodness, where are things going to be? But it gives you a different perspective. And I look at him, man, yeah, we got to get it under control no matter what, because uh, those numbers, they're getting pretty lofty, to put it lightly. With that in mind, Kevin, boy, we got quite a market. I'm sure you'll have plenty to talk about on Fast Market. Do you have any individual equities that you're talking about yet on the program at 12, Kevin? Well, Tommy, it's a, as you know, once we get to this time of the year, it starts on retail. And so... We'll have Target on the nice. docket. We'll have JD.com on the docket. They both come out with their earnings tomorrow before the open. I think like Folio is going to do a presentation on Target. We also have uh, TJX is going to come out with earnings. So, yeah, we have a lot of good choice today. I know one will be Target. I know one will be TJX. So nice. uh, a lot of good names today as we shift our focus from large cap tech into retail and the U.S. consumer. And remember, we get retail sales tomorrow morning. Pretty interesting. You get retail earnings, retail sales. Both of those could hit those equities. I was pulling them up on the Thinkorswim platform as you were talking about them, Kevin. You got Target, my goodness, quite the pullback from 268 to 107. And then on the flip side of that, man, a company like TJ Maxx can't go wrong from a low pandemic low of 32 bucks, pushing uh, recent highs of 91.14 for TJ Maxx. Kevin, I appreciate the time. Doesn't get much busier than mornings like this, man. And we'll be watching the program Fast Market at 12 today, man. Talk to you tomorrow, Tommy. Sounds great. Folks, check it out. Today's going to be a good one. You know it, man. We got some volatility in this market. Great wrap up from Kevin talking about those numbers. Uh, that program, every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, folks. Uh, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network. Yeah, pretty remarkable, man. TJ Maxx, look at these charts, right? Pretty interesting that you can have an environment. You talk about winners and losers, okay, where TJ Maxx is flourishing right now. And check out when you put this thing on a longer term basis. My goodness, right? Can you do any wrong? Spring's been on a one way trip since the lows of 2009 at $4 and change. You're talking about a 20 plus bagger over that period of time to 91.14. The flip side of that, Target, great company, okay? Now, yeah, Target's got some returns since that cherry pick low of 2009 as well, but check it out, man. Target 
only up three times the share price over that period of time. And that's cherry picking the lows, okay? From about $32 to 107 off the 268. Boy, it's quite a pullback. Uh, and let me tell you, folks, we love Target. Tommy, do you like Target? I like Target. I like Target, huh? Do we like Target? What do we get? Tell them. What do we do? Do we go play? Do we go see the dinosaurs? Mm. So there's no more Toys R Us, right? So we've kind of turned Target into our Toys R Us experience. Yeah. Uh, it's nice in Florida now, but during those summer months, man, it's difficult, especially with small children, okay, to find things to do, period. You got to do stuff potentially really inside. You can do some stuff outside, but boy, even the beaches with the water get a little bit too hot during a period of summer. So what do we do, man? We go to Target. We hang out. But let me tell you, man, Target doesn't mean that we're spending all our money there because they are expensive. So it's interesting, that dichotomy. Great user experience in that store, but not exactly where I'm choosing to spend my money with high prices. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. And bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up. 1.4% to kick off the trading session. NASDAQ 100, we're up 1.8%. Tell him, Tommy, 1.8%. Oh, he's got his pterodactyl, folks. Oh. Hey, Tommy, what number is McQueen? Uh, 95. 95, that's right. Good job, buddy. Uh, okay, folks, we got the S&P right now, up by 63. NASDAQ 100, 
up by 275. And as I mentioned, the Dow up by 1% right now. And how about the Russell? Pairs some of those gains, but still up by 3.3% right now for the Russell 2000. And jumping back to the S&P for a moment, some pretty interesting action in terms of where we're going. I think we're going to the recent highs, folks, of 46.34. We're trading right now at 44.89. We're up by 1.5%. And that is... Oh, he's flying, Tommy. That's going to correlate to the recent highs of 46.34. The cool part is, you know what that also correlates to? The 1 to 1.618 expansion of the recent pullback from October 12th. Pretty remarkable when you think about it. That we can drive down from 44.29 to 4,100 and change. And just like that, we're pushing 4,500. Folks, that was October 27th. On a calendar mark, where was that? Those lows were made two weeks ago last Friday. Absolutely remarkable, the acceleration. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon, man. My dad's in the Tiger's Den right now talking about, uh, yeah, that swaps are pointing to a half point cut, half of a full point for July. Fed interest rate swaps for July show Fed cutting half a percentage point. Not outlandish, man. Kevin made the point, and folks, check out Fast Market. The experience you get with Kevin and the team, Tom White out there, I've learned so much myself over the years, and it's always nice when somebody uh, lends credence to, an, to a theory that you're thinking about, right? And that theory is, man, the Fed may be ready to cut quicker than people expect because think about where inflation is right now versus where it was when they hiked to 5.5%. It has cooled since then, okay? It doesn't mean it's going to continue. The last is supposed to be the toughest part, the sticky part, right? But we're not seeing it yet. And if we continue to see these numbers, and listen, retail sales is an important one tomorrow, okay? My dad was talking about sales last night, talking about the airlines, um, talking about the numbers that they're pulling in, in terms of how inflation is hitting the numbers, but how it's driving retail sales to higher numbers as well. Anyway, for what it's worth, man, you're talking about 50 basis point cuts priced in for swaps by July. What happened, Dave? Oh, what happened, Tommy? I think we went backwards. Let's see if we can find it. There he is. There's that pterodactyl. Oh, we love McQueen, folks, and we love dinosaurs. And if you're not familiar with McQueen, McQueen, that's from the Disney franchise Cars. We got Cars 1, Cars 2, Cars 3. We're big fans of Cars 1 and Cars 3. Cars 2, not as big of a, uh, of a fan in this household. And I kind of understand. I'm a fan of 1 and I'm a fan of 3. If you know, you know, if you got kids in the household. But you know what we're getting into? We're getting into video games now. Uh, and... There's, listen, there's good screen time and bad screen time. I've talked about it many times, folks, okay? You got to put a limit on it. Man, we wake up. We don't do screen time. We play. I got grapes here. We're a big, we're a big Pringles household, too, but you got to eat grapes. We got bananas, right? Tommy's always eating fruit, man. He's gotten me into eating so much fruit. Kids, they keep you healthy. They keep you energetic. They give you, you know, a new lease on life to a certain degree when you look at that youthful exuberance, the joy. Um... But trying to get him eat healthy, I've started eating healthy. So you keep all that good stuff in there. But screen time in the same aspect, always thinking about it. Good screen time, bad screen time. We're getting into games right now. It's cool to see uh, the mentality of playing games like that. We go to Target I talked about. We play the free gaming units. And that's what makes me think of Toys R Us a bit. Do you remember, folks, when you were a kid, you go into Toys R Us? I'll tell you a story. Played hockey in high school and before that hockey man, the best. Going to get Tommy. He's already skated once with me and Grandpa. We're going to get him skating more. But you play hockey, and so I was fortunate to play hockey. Amazing high school I went to, Noble and Greeno School in Dedham, Massachusetts. And we were fortunate to have a rink on campus, okay? But we had the school stretched from 7th grade, 8th grade, and then high school. So middle school and high school. And with that, good job. You want to blow it up now? There it is. So you had a middle school hockey team, and then you had a freshman hockey team, and then I believe you had a, a JV and a varsity, and you may have had a JV and varsity women's team. You, you had a JV and varsity women's team. You may have had a freshman team. But at least you had four men's teams and two women's teams for the high school. So you had six teams that needed to practice at the end of school. Okay, So school ends at 2.30 or 3 o'clock. Most other teams just go out to the field and practice. Okay, But what happens is when you're going through the whole high school, oh, let's blow it back up. As you made it to the JV and the varsity later on in high school, so talking about junior, senior year, most times, you would have to wait for your practice. So school ends at 3.30, the middle school team went first, okay? Then you had the freshman team, 
Then you had the JV teams and the varsity teams always practice last. So what would happen was is that as you got to 17, junior, senior year, you had a license at the time, or at least you had friends who were, oh, is he flying, Tommy? And so what you do is you'd have three, four hours to kill. Sometimes your practice will go off at 6.30 at night. Now, you could get picked up, drop, brought back by your parents. Most kids would just stay on campus. Maybe you do your homework from the night ahead of practice. Once you got a car, you were able to go off campus and come back. And we would go, I remember. Hey, what happened, oh, what happened, Tommy? That's YouTube music. They're jumping you all around. Which one do you want, Tommy? We would go to, where we go? We'd go to McDonald's or Burger King, usually. And then we'd go to Toys R Us and would play video games in the aisle. And that's what Tommy does. He's only two years old, right? But kids love video games. And you know what he loves right now? It's amazing how brands are just on fire. Mario Kart. Hey, do you like Mario Kart? Mario Kart. Oh, you see that smile? So how does that happen, right? You think about generational brands. We got a million games that they can play, okay? I've downloaded, he's got a Fire tablet. I'm jumping around a bit here. But recognizing brands and how they're generational and they go from generation to the next, we got a million car games you can play. He likes them. You know what he loves? Mario Kart. And you know who he likes to be? Who do you like to be when you race on Mario Kart? Who do you like to be? I'm Mario. Mario, of course. Ah, you like Mario? It's just cool to see how that stuff transitions. Uh, there's only one Mario and Luigi. We've watched the Mario movie as well in the household. Pretty innocent movie. Um, but games, they're the thing. And so tying it back to Kevin talking about Target. Okay, so Target's out with their numbers tomorrow. Great store. Boy, there's a jump for you, 4%. Look at these numbers, man, right now. Now, that, we got Walmart up 3 tenths percent, okay? TJ Maxx up one2 Target really getting a lift, man. Oh, is that a big yawn, Tommy? Yeah, they do they go ex-dividend on today as well? They might. Which is even an, you know add another dollar ten of what would be happening to that equity. Now, yeah, they got their preview tonight. This is all going on for yields, etc. In terms of their numbers, you jump over to the analyze tab, you jump over to the earnings tab. You're talking about about a seven. Ah, we'll call it an eight dollar move priced in for their earnings event tonight. You're up to one ten sixty six. You're up by four dollars and twenty three cents right now. And this is what I talk about, folks. Even if you don't trade options, right? Let's say you're an equity holder. Whoa, is he flying, Tommy? Did you did you guys see that fly? Did was he flying? Oh my goodness! Whoa, folks, that pterodactyl's flying! Oh my goodness! Think about that. If you trade options, right? You know that if you're going to hold that equity tonight, you better be ready for an eight dollar move in either direction, dwarfing the four dollar move you have this morning. We'll take a little bit of a look at Target. When we get back, we'll talk Larry Pesavento for his live trading webinar coming up tomorrow. Lots to talk about still. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Tigers, have you ever wondered what it would be like to trade right alongside Larry Pesavento? We'll wonder no more. Wednesday, November 15th, Larry Pesavento will be hosting a live trading webinar. From 8 a.m. to noon, look over Larry's shoulder as he analyzes potential trades and sets them up. Not only will you get front row seat to the mind of a veteran trader, but you'll get to interact with Larry live as he plays his trades and goes through key material that has aided him in his profession. Go to the front page of TFNN.com, sign up for the service, and enjoy. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL 
SPUU or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets continuing to climb right now with the S&Ps up 68 points, make it 1.55%. NASDAQ 100 approaching a 2% pop right now. We're at session highs, up 1.92%. The Russell, uh, excuse me, the Dow up just more than a percent, and the Russell up by 3.7%. Video game numbers would be the expression. Crude catches a little bit of a pop. We got weaker yields. We have a weaker dollar. That's putting a bid under commodities right now. Gold, look at this, man. Gold continuing to climb. Check out the gold report on the front page of TFNN, folks. Are you racing, Tommy? What you doing? You want Dinah to go back? Let's see. Where is he? He's right there. No. There he is. Oh, no. I want to have McQueen. I'm not sure where McQueen is, buddy. All right. We jump to the dollar index right now. DXY. No. Yeah, that's not working. I tell you what, do you want to play Mario Kart? No. No. Not Mario Kart. The mind of a two-year-old, almost three, folks. We become individuals very early in life. That's one thing that... It's my last chance. Last chance. Okay, what would you like to watch? You're being so good. Did you, did you say hi to everybody? They're all watching you. Everyone's here. We're doing the show. He was so excited, folks. I told him last night that we get to do the show again today, huh? We got the Spider-Man shirt already. Just last chance. The last chance. That's okay. We can find some stuff. What would you like to watch, buddy? I want Hey, where did that go? Should we look up McQueen? I'm with the racing McQueen. Let's see if we can find him. Let's see if we can find him, Tommy. That one. Go ahead. You press it. That one. Okay. All right. So we have the dollar continuing to drop right now. Okay. We have yields continuing to rise right now. We have the market continuing to rise with the S&P now up 70 points. Feels like the next stop, like I mentioned, folks, is still 130 points, 120 points, at least that 4,600 mark. About 100 points from where we're trading at right now. Not sure if it happens instantly. Um but it's probably going to be a quick move, man. Nothing getting in the way of this market right now. Now, listen, we got retail sales tomorrow. That's going to be an important number as well. Going back over the inflation data. I want the youth McQueen. Is he crashing? CPI, month over month, 
the estimate was for a slight rise. We came in flat. Core, I mean, we basically missed everything by 0.1 percentage. I don't think they let you use McQueen. Oh, there he is. Core comes in at 0.2%. Year over year, we're at 3.2%. And on a core basis, we're at 4%. So, you know, year over year numbers, okay, we're not at 2% yet. But keep in mind the point I've been making, the point Kevin made, okay, at some point, the interest rate is going to have to come back down just to remain restrictive where we are. We don't want it to get too restrictive as inflation is already coming back down, right? Okay, now we're going to jump around a bit here. Where are we? Oh, come on. That's not what we wanted. Uh-oh. Ah, I wanted to get to UBS. All right, I'll find them at the next break. UBS out here was talking about their projections of cuts. And when you start thinking about it, folks, you're looking at a potential. Here we go. For perfect. UBS strategists see far deeper Fed rate cuts than what the markets are pricing in. Now, this article written yesterday, okay, I was reading this last night, not calculating what is happening today. And, boy, there are going to be some huge differences in terms of these numbers. I wish I could see an update of this chart right now. You'll probably see an article with one by the end of the day. Tra traders are pricing around, around 75 basis points of rate cuts by December of 2024. Folks, all of these are getting moved up dramatically. My dad was in there talking about July that it was already at 50 basis points. Okay. Now, UBS. There you go. UBS is looking for the federal funds rate to fall between 2.5 and 2.75% by the end of 2024. They see the terminal rate at one and a quarter percent by early 2025. Okay, by contrast, the Fed was not thinking so yesterday, but things have changed today. Now, they talked about, I believe, the first cut in March. Let's see if we can get there. Yeah, they talk about what they use in here. And you had Morgan Stanley and Goldman out yesterday between 175 and 300 basis points. They're all looking for a lot of cuts over the next year or two. That's the baseline of what's coming out. And the data this morning really supports that number. Pretty interesting. You get all those calls in the last couple of days, and then we get quite an acceleration to where we are already as of 945 in the morning this morning. Okay, we'll jump to Google and oh, Apple. McQueen. Man, this market's just not stopping. You want McQueen, Tommy? We're almost done. You're doing so good, buddy. Oh, should we oh, should we take a look at Google? Should we take a look at Google? Oh. Google with the Nasdaq up by 1.8% today. Now, this news comes out, okay? Apple gets 36% of Google revenue in their oh, search deal. You want Lena McQueen? I know, buddy. So what he wants to play, folks, right now to let you know what's going on is he's watching videos of Grand Theft Auto using Lightning McQueen. And he wants to control Lightning McQueen. So we got to get some Grand Theft Auto going, huh, Tommy? They're not letting you control it, buddy. I have Mario Kart on my phone if you'd like to play that. But I don't have McQueen on my phone. You just got to let it play. There you go. Let it play. There you go. There you go. There you go. Are they racing? Now, this number was not supposed to come out, okay? Aww, I want it, McQueen. Oh, buddy, I know you're being so good, huh? You got McQueen right here, but they're not letting you race there. Let's see if we got any more. No, that one. That one, but that one's not letting you, bud. Yeah, that one's not letting you. We can try and figure it out after the show. What do you think? What do you think? I know, huh? You have to wipe your little nose. You got a little bogus. Now... Uh, just out of curiosity to know how these things work, right? This number was not supposed to come out. So Apple gets 36% of all the revenue Google takes in. You think about it, right? That is an awesome deal for Apple, okay? Now, Apple could create their own advertising engine and do all that stuff. But, man, Google has monetized search probably to perfection. And Apple gets to take almost 40% of the revenue that Google has. If Apple was running that themselves, it would take quite a while to get up to that case. And this comes... Oh, is he going? This comes as you had a university professor, okay, disclosing the number during his testimony in Google's defense at the Justice Department's antitrust trial, okay? Google's main litigator, which is amazing here, right? Okay, so they asked the question. The main litigator 
cringed when he said the number because that was supposed to remain confidential. But guess what? Once you say it, cat's out of the bag, man. Uh, 36% is what Google pays Apple. Quite a number. Antitrust. We'll see if it plays out. McQueen! One more segment, folks. Don't go away. And don't forget about Larry. We're talking about him next. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. You're going to win, Tommy. Welcome back, folks. Thanks so much for starting your trading day right here at TFNN. This is Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien the Fourth, coming to you live. What happened, buddy? He's got Mater. He's got McQueen. We got all the Disney characters, man. Let's check in on Disney before we go back to Home Depot with their strong numbers. Disney catching the bid with the market, up by 1.9% today. You jump back to Home Depot. Home Depot out with their earnings, up by $17. That's a 6% lift for Home Depot. Uh, well above what the market's doing right now as Home Depot accelerates higher to 305.04. Oh, did we drop McQueen? You got him. I got him for you. Here you go, buddy. There you go. Now, Home Depot numbers. All right, some some tough numbers in here, but expectations are everything. Sales are now expected to fall three to four percent for the year, compared with a prior range of a two to five percent decline. Earnings are going to fall nine to eleven percent this year, compared to guidance of seven to thirteen percent. So narrowing that range a little bit on both accords there. Nonetheless, the market likes the numbers as Home Depot is higher. And we talked about it, folks. I think it's shaping up for a great day in the markets tomorrow. You're going to get retail sales at 830. You're going to get PPI numbers at 830. 
Mr. Pesavento, our man, he's going to be in there tomorrow morning, folks, at 8 in the morning for his live trading session. Trade what you see, 8 a.m. till noon Eastern time, four hours. Boy, we got quite a market right now. Uh, check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks. It's $295 to attend for the four-hour live webinar. It will be archived if you can't attend all four hours or if you just want to rewatch what's going on. And you get a month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, a $97 value. If you're already a subscriber, you get your next month paid for. So that's built into it. It's a $97 value. That brings the cost almost under 200 bucks if you look at it that way for a great four-hour trading session. And we got a great market for it, man. And Larry's in there getting ready. We got some great traders already signed up. They're in there getting ready, folks. And that kicks things off in 22 hours from right now. So don't forget about Larry. Uh, and yeah. Watch out for this market. We ended at 4,500, right on the dot as we speak, folks. NASDAQ 100, all of the markets near session highs, pushing almost 2%. How about the Dow up 1.3%, the Russell up 3.9%, and we finish it up with yields, the 10-year. Backing off slightly off of that spike high of 128, still up a full point and eight ticks. Folks, thanks for starting your trading day. Don't forget about Larry. Check it out on the front page of TFNN right now. And we got Basil Chapman coming up next, folks. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Say bye. Everybody.